so the goal all along has been to empower young people to have a conversation and be part of the conversation and felt like news outlets historically have done a poor job appealing to our generation. So you know, very early on in the naming you know, was, and the tone and the framing was all about sort of young people grabbing the mic back and speaking and having an opportunity and a platform to do so. You know, John Stewart has been so successful with this generation because we you know, we've been lied to by politicians one too many times, we've been sort of misled by news outlets one too many times, and the, you know, the truth of the matter is young people are very, very different than our parents. They're less partisan than our parents. They're more interested in, you know, an authentic voice and holding people accountable and challenging the status quo. So John Stewart does that. Um, he's also very funny, so it becomes very entertaining. But, you know, for policy, Mike, we've tried to sort of figure out ways to deeply embed that voice and, and, and those angles in our stories so that sort of, cap, you know, sort of tapping into the sentiment that young people feel, which is challenging that like conventional narrative. Okay. Now we've been pretty fortunate uh, to work with a team of investors and advisors that, you know, have given us the freedom to be able to just focus on growth and our audience and sort of producing stories that resonate, um, experimenting and figuring things out. Um, all in all, it's uh, you know somewhere over three million, um, and as we ramp up, we're going to see where that leaves us in terms of financial need too. You know, if, if there's one thing we know about my generation, it's that we ignore banner ads more quickly than any other generation, and so it's a matter of how uh, brands can, can can create really really authentic and compelling content in this voice that I'm talking about. Who's, there's going to be huge opportunities to work with brands. Um, who want to access this demog demographic and um, you know produce sort of engaging content in a in a unique way? And um, I run the journalism uh, content side of the business. Um, previously to Policy Mike, I was actually at Change.org, um, where I studied content and petitions and why sort of certain petitions went viral and others didn't. Uh, and previous to that, I was actually living in Beirut, working as a journalist. Uh, both for a think tank and then as a freelancer on my own. So, we, as Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and Vine and Pinterest have grown, um, we utilize those tools as the place where we get our information and our news. Um, which means that as a news outlet, um, you know, you, you have to create content that reaches young people in the places we're in our feeds, in the places that we're getting our news. And so a, a Facebook story lo looks a lot different than a Twitter story, looks a lot different than a Pinterest story, looks a lot different than the homepage of the New York Times that you used to buy. And so it's a matter of sort of understanding the platforms really, really well. And then when you want to talk about things like Ukraine, understanding you know, if we're going to do something for Facebook versus Twitter, and program content on those platforms, those stories look very, very different, just in the same way that you know, a legacy outlet, um, a story for video versus a story on the home page looked a lot different.